An earthquake is underway beneath the eastern portion of Yellowstone Lake. An earthquake swarm is a collection of earthquakes in space and time. Experienced observers in Yellowstone know that earthquake clusters are very common, with about half of all earthquakes in Yellowstone occurring as part of an earthquake cluster. The current shoal is interesting because it is slightly larger than the average herd in terms of number of earthquakes, and is located beneath Yellowstone Lake. This naturally brings comparisons to the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Swarm, one of the most famous swarms to occur since the creation of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. The 2008-2009 swarm began on December 27, 2008, in the northern part of Yellowstone Lake and lasted for approximately 11 days until January 7, 2009. The swarm contained more than 800 earthquake locations, with the largest being a magnitude 4.1 event that occurred in early 2008. The 2008 swarm was notable for its seismicity, slowly migrating northward over time at a speed of about 1 km per day. In addition, surface deformation was recorded at nearby GPS stations along with the migration of the herd. Migrating swarms accompanied by surface deformation are indicative of fluid movement through the shallow crust. As pressurized fluid moves through the Earth's crust, it breaks rocks and shifts them, causing earthquakes and surface deformation. It is difficult to know exactly what fluid is moving, such as water, gas, magma, considering the small amount of total deformation. This is the only time a GPS station in Yellowstone has recorded deformation associated with an active earthquake swarm. In comparison, the current swarm is much weaker in terms of the total number of events and the energy released known as seismic moments. In contrast to the 2008 herd, seismicity in the current herd does not appear to have migrated over time. However, one interesting aspect of this shoal is that it occurs right on the border of the Yellowstone caldera at fault that was formed by surface collapse during the most recent large explosive eruption 631,000 years ago. Could this swarm be a reactivation of the boundary fault? Only further research can answer that question but swarms on caldera boundary faults are relatively common. For example, earlier this year, on September 10, 2020, there was another aftershock with around 100 local earthquakes in 24 hours, the largest measuring 2.8 on the SR. This herd is located in the southern part of the caldera boundary fault which cuts through the regional fault zone. Existing faults and cracks are weak zones that are often prone to slipping, especially in the presence of hydrothermal fluids such as those found in Yellowstone. At this point, it's unlikely that the herd beneath Yellowstone Lake will approach the size of the larger herds that have occurred in recent decades but you never know how things will play out, especially when they occur. Against earthquakes, 